announcement. I'm going to be streaming on YouTube again. I'm aiming to stream twice a week in the evenings from around 7 p.m. We'll be playing games I haven't played yet from this huge PS4 library before the PS5 comes out, and then we'll be doing PS5 game streams. Really looking forward to like Resident Evil Village and Hogwarts Legacy and games like that. The streams will be posted in full on my gaming channel, Red Vibe 2, so go subscribe to that as well. We'll also be starting a Dream Team career mode series where members can choose my signings and all that stuff. So my first stream will be tomorrow evening around 7 p.m., so come chill. How's it going? Hey guys, welcome back to more Cholton Career Mode, where we have two cup games to kick things off today. Let's have a look at the calendar as always, and you can see we've got Colchester and Shrewsbury Town, one of which is in the uh, Papa John's Trophy, and one of them is in the Carabao Cup, I believe. I'm not sure which is which. Uh, it could be either. That's Colchester and Shrewsbury. Yeah, they're both in League 1 and League 2, I think. So, yeah, I'm not sure which is which, to be fair. Um, we've then got games against Wimbledon. Uh, sorry, is that Wimbledon? Yeah, I think that is Wimbledon. Sorry if it's not. But then we've got Peterborough and Doncaster. As you guys know, I have uh, made it quite clear that I want to get through four or five games per episode now using that Quicksim feature quite a lot. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. One thing you guys did point out in the comments last time is that there are a number of potential free transfers that we can make coming up in the January transfer window. We're here on December 5th, so it's the perfect time to start scouting players and looking for players that we can potentially sign for free and also pay for because we have got, uh, I think it's yeah, £4.4 million sitting there. Uh, we've a couple of transfers already agreed. Kaufman coming in. We also... Uh, is it just Kaufman? Oh, and Levitt as well. Um, but yeah, we still are looking for... A few areas in the squad maybe to strengthen so as you can see here in the global transfer network uh, the instructions on my scouts currently are a pacey prolific striker that's just a default one i haven't changed um we've changed this to a center back promising first team quality so hopefully a young center back that is first team quality and we can put it straight into the team and also one that's going to grow for the future. We've all, all already got that Shen guy in the youth uh, academy who were just waiting for him to turn 16. And he'll go sh pretty much straight into the first team. But still, I think we need a little bit of strengthening because our centre-backs are either at the maximum of their potential or old. So left midfielders is the, is the third of the uh, instructions we've got. Just think we need a little bit of strengthening on the, on the wings. I don't know why I've zoned in specifically on left mids, but we have. Uh, any position, first in quality and promising. But you can see there I've changed the contract remaining to zero to one years this means these this is well, it says zero players found because i've only just done it but this is going to bring back players which we will be able to sign for free and are hopefully first team quality and young again and then i've got the exact same for goalkeeper except i haven't put this one down to zero to one years because i'm quite happy to pay money for another keeper so yeah this is the key one for free transfers and we've also added you know a few little bits of the squad where we need strengthening. So, uh, on to today's games. We've already we've already scouted a few players off screen. I won't bore you with too much of that. We'll just obviously, when it comes to it, negotiations and stuff, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about the players that we're looking at. Um, of course, feel free to put um, suggestions for players down in the comments ahead of the January transfer window. But without further, oh, by the way, just look at this squad, man. This squad's such a championship squad. I mean, Crowley is a 75 rated on that right wing. Every time I look at this squad, I'm like, what are we doing in this league? Love that Pierce has gone back up to a 68 as well. We've already been through that. Uh, let's skip time forward now to this first cup game. And another thing that I've done, guys, is I've made a second team sheet ahead of these two cup games. And it's basically like the reserve squad. So obviously we've come to know and love this regular 11, which is pretty much what you can see on the screen right now. Our highest rated players, the players that are performing so well for us. But I've also now got this secondary reserve team sheet. Same formation. We've just put the sort of second choice of each position in there so that we can just easily have that as a base to go into cup games. Uh, if that makes sense, maybe we'll make a few little tweaks here and there. But that is what we're doing for now. Let's get into this game against Colchester. And I think in style of, uh, in similar style to last time, we'll probably play at least one or maybe sim one and maybe jump in to at least one of these cup games to give a chance for you guys to see some of the players that don't feature so heavily in the league, if that makes sense. So... Will it be Colchester? This is the FA Cup, so I was actually wrong. It wasn't the Papa John's Trophy, it was the FA Cup. So maybe we don't have a Carabao Cup fixture, or maybe we don't have a Papa John's fixture. But this is the FA Cup second round, so this is actually quite important. So yeah, before we go into that fixture, we do have a squad, a scout report available from our youth squad. Let's have a look at this. Oh, so this is the third and final Chinese youth prospect scout report. 
Um, so Pavo Rutli has come back with Antang, decent. Gong Sun Zhao, probably not going to get this guy involved. I think Chen Guo, oh, he could be good. He could be good. Uh, you can see there he's got maximum potential of 93. This guy, definitely Cho Yun Bai, definitely we're going to get him involved as well. He looks like he could be a winger slash striker slash midfielder. Uh, 17 as well, so probably going to be towards the 60 rating. Ju Lin Qian, we're definitely going to reject him. He looks cool, but he's just not good enough. And then, oh, look, there's so many players to promote. So I think for quality control purposes here, we're going to get rid of him. We'll get rid of him. We'll sign him. We'll sign him. And we'll sign him. And we'll discover exactly, like, how good they are in uh, future scout reports. I don't know where my Danish guy's gone. Because they were supposed to be on the same date. But uh, I don't know. Maybe, no, that's that's strange. That's very strange. So yeah, I want to take the FA Cup quite seriously this year. A little cup run. In well, To be fair, not even just the FA Cup. But also the Carabao Cup as well. And even the Papa John's Trophy. Um, I think that's going to be the main source of our entertainment for this season. Purely because we're running away with the league. And I keep saying that. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Because we could lose a few on the spin. And it could become more tight in the league. But... I do really believe that the entertainment is going to come from the Cups. They're going to be the most intense games. So, with that being said, we'll play this FA Cup fixture against Colchester. I'll sort out the team and we'll get into it. I'm fairly sure Colchester are a League 2 team. I'm, I'm not up to scratch with my lower league <laughs> knowledge, which is actually ironic because Charlton are actually in a lower league now. and we, I just can't come to grips with it. Like Charlton, to me, shouldn't be in League 1 ever. Don't know if that's bias, but hey ho. Um, but yeah, I think Colchester are in the league below. In fact, I'm fairly sure they are a League Two team, like 90% sure. Um, I haven't actually made much changes, many changes at all, to the starting eleven from what we saw. So let's have a look at the team lineups. So here's your home eleven today. We got Silvera making another starting goal. The young 17-year-old keeper with bags of potential. Chris Gunter, I believe his first start for me in the career mode. Um, at the back with Barker, Innes, and Matson. Sorry about my phone. It's probably going to pop up a few times. Levitt, Morgan, Watson in midfield. Doughty, Bogle, Smith up front and on to Colchester I have muted my phone now just in case you're wondering Gherkin in goal um, we have one ex Cholton player here in the name of uh, Callum Harriet by the name of Cam Callum Harriet uh, they've got pretty unrecognizable I recognize that Pell player in midfield other than that I don't recognize too many of the players but that is the Colchester lineup anyway um, who's that who is that I don't know who that is I really don't know who that is who could that have been anyway while that while that boggles my mind um, we are going to kick off. By the way, the only pl player I did change was Omar Bogle up front, just to um, make a note on that. We did sub him in for Washington, who starts on the bench, but we just thought we'll give another chance to Omar Bogle to see if he can impress us, because one bad game doesn't define a player. So here come Colchester on the attack. It's Cowan Hall out to Scarlett, who looks to get the beating of Ian Martson on this left-hand side. Sh checks back in. Cowan uh, Hall to Norris. He's in the penalty box. Ryan Innes putting his body in the way. That is why Ryan Innes is on good form for us in this career mode, to be fair. Um, I did have a look on Sofifra, which is maybe a little bit cheating. I didn't do it for many many players, just for Innes and a couple of others, uh, just to see how far they will grow. And Innes is a player that doesn't seem to grow very much, despite being 25. Like He stays around about 68 when he reaches his max potential. Of course, there is dynamic potential, which can knock that up by a couple. But we'll, we'll have to see. Levitt here. Over to Watson. Watson inside to Levitt. On the edge of the box, just hovering about. It's Bogle. Oh, loose ball. Smashed clear there. Oh, it's a good through ball as well. Over to Cowan Hall. We don't want Barker to stray from his man there. Barker's not tracking his man very well in the middle there, I can see. Luckily for us... Watson doing very, very well defensively. Out for a throw. Throw. Ooh, dummy throw by the by the computer. Wright's going to pick up the ball. It's an offside decision there. That was very silly. We're going to play this short now. It's Innes. Let's fire a... Oh, that's terrible. I shouldn't have done that. Harrier intercepts. Luckily, his pass doesn't quite go to the man in blue. And we're going to see Morgan fire a great through ball here to Omar Bogle. Go on, Omar. Go on, Omar. Do it for us. Oh, that's poor by Omar Bogle again. Um, I'll take partly part of the blame there but he just was a bit slow and clunky and he just wanted it on his left foot and it just like wasn't set up for his left foot corner ball anyway we're going to take the corner it comes in from Dylan Levitt it's not a bad one it's Ryan Innes again 
This boy from Corners is unstoppable. He is the Burj Khalifa. He is about 97 foot tall. But somehow he's got the manoeuvrability in him to uh, to honour Sebo and do the worm. It's a great, great, great goal. Um, and Corners and Ryan Innes in the box is a deadly, deadly feature for the Charlton team right now. And they'll have to consider his height advantage over Deji Oshilaja right now, even for league games. Because Deji's a slightly higher rated player than him. He's a 68. Innes is only a 66. But he's on form and he's fucking massive as well. Um, hang on. Why am I in a Charlton kit? What's happened there then? Oh, just hacked down there by Ben Watson. Apparently, we've won the ball. And it's going to give us the opportunity to break Smith, though. Just dawdling on the ball a little bit, but plays a fantastic ball up to Gunter, who's got a good cross on him. We know he has. Oh, but that's not good enough to Bogle. Bogle wanted better service than that. Can't blame Omar for that one. Martin switches the play over to Chris Gunter, who controls it well. Takes it down the outside, where he finds an opportunity to pass to Smith. Back inside to Levitt. It's a good through ball from Levitt, and it's uh, Smith now. A little step over. Levitt looking to link up again. I think he's offside here, Morgan. He's put it in the back of the net, to be fair to him. Great finish from the lad, but it was just a fraction offside. If Bogle just turned and passed quicker, I mean, it, it wasn't a slow turn and pass from Bogle. So, again, we can't blame Bogle. But if it was just that tad quicker, maybe Morgan's run. Maybe Morgan could have timed his run better as well. Just unfortunate there because it was a good finish. So the ball hacked into midfield where Morgan picks it up. Good pass to Dylan Levitt, looking for Omar Bogle to make a run. He does eventually get his skates on. And uh, we've worked some space here. It's Morgan out to Smith. We're going to have a shot here. No, we're not. We're going to play it to Bogle, who's got to score. And there is his first goal. I'm so happy for the boy. Omar Bogle, the number 17, off the mark for Cholton. I think, just in general, I don't think he's scored on any Sims or anything. And that will be his first goal for us. Um, both playing and just in general. Yeah, great finish from him. Great movement from him. Um, it wasn't a great finish. It was just great movement. It was really good work down the right-hand side between Morgan and... I always forget who the player that assisted was. I think it was... I think it was Smith who played it into him. But over in the... Yeah, it was Smith. In fact, I remember. In the end, gives it to Bogle, pokes it home. 2-0 Charlton. Another chance here. It's Morgan, who's been a real threat for Charlton. He's lost the ball in this on this occasion, though. Norris gets a lovely ball through to the striker. Silvera, one-on-one. -on -one. It's a good save. Is it going to go in anyway? Off the post. Gunter clears, or Barker clears, one of the two. And we have escaped there, because that was a fantastic chance for Colchester. Silvera did pretty well, though, to get something on it. And it's a good instinctual save, instinctive save. Uh, here comes Morgan. To Bogle, through ball to Alfie Doughty, finished that. Oh, Doughty, that's his faulty shooting again. I think we might have won a corner for it with his perseverance, but Doughty, I just can't wait for him to get that shooting up to, like, even the 50s. His shooting's, like, 42 or something right now, which is just not good enough. He has scored a couple for us, Doughty, but he's also capable of moments like that. Another time, another opportunity for Callum Harriet to break away. Great catch-up from Albie Morgan. Albie Morgan's been absolutely everywhere in this first half. Norris. Through ball again, Silvera alert to it. Good instinctive keeper, this guy. He just knows what to do. He makes you feel comfortable at the back. Oh, another opportunity here. Charlie Barker and Norris, the only two players between the keeper, Silvera. It's actually a good bit of defending in the end by Barker, and that takes us into the half-time period, the half-time interval. And the score is Charlton 2, Colchester 1. Uh, Colchester 0. Could have very nearly been Charlton 2, Colchester 1 if they had have buried that chance, but Silvera... Did enough to push it onto the post. That man there, Watson's had a good game. But by far, the uh, the star performer of that half was Albie Morgan. I think we will actually um, bring Sop on Wiradu on. And we'll take off Gunter begrudgingly because I actually liked how Gunter performed. I just want to give youngsters a chance. So there's the one sub we've made. And we continue into the second half. Pell. Hassan Ali to Norris. Looking to get past Innes, but he says, you shall not pass, as he seems to be doing quite a lot. I'm really liking using Innes, to be fair. And uh, we break away. It's Wiradu. Gets a nice left-footed through ball down the line to Smith. He's going to stop fake into Omar Bogle. Omar Bogle with the little dummy. Oh, I think that's onside. It is. Is it? It is onside. Albie Morgan finishes off the very nice chance, the very nice bit of play there between some of the Charlton boys. I need to stop doing that celebration. I mean, we are flexing on him a little bit. 
And I'm really glad Morgan scored as well because he's played so, so well. Been the man in the match by far so far. And it uh, looks like we will be progressing to the third round of the FA Cup. Vogel turning, bang. Love that from Albie Morgan. In the right place at the right time. And he gets on the score sheet again. He's hopefully going to become a real mainstay in this Charlton team if he can grow quick enough. Chance here for Norris. Wiridu does... Oh, he, he originally uses his strength very well. Recovers in the end. Very strange series of events there. But we do get the ball clear in the end. Watson's looking for somebody to make a run. Probably goes for the right the, the right person there. Or oh, Doughty, just not sure where to be. And Albie Morgan in the box again. Lays it back to Ben Watson. It's a pass over to Levitt. Inside to Bogle. Think he's offside here. It's a terrible pass from Bogle anyway. Interested to know what this guy's passing stat is. Because he's just ruined, his, ruined an attack for Charlton there. With just a terrible pass. Norris. Looking to break forward for Colchester. These players in Colchester Blue have only got limited ability in comparison to this Charlton team. However, they're trying their best. Hassan Ali with a snapshot there. Not good enough to trouble Silvera in goal. Matson, Martin, I should say. To uh, Watson. Innes does well to collect the ball. Pass to, to Levitt. It's Morgan. Little step over. Looking for the run. Reverse pass. Oh, that's brilliant. Bogle's got to finish it now. Oh, it's a great move. And it's Albie Morgan at the heartbeat of that move again. And Bogle with the second of the game. So pleased for him as well, getting on the score sheet. He's doing what he's expect, expected to do, really. And that's putting the ball in the back of the net. Really good worked move. And we're winning like by ridiculous amount. I know I've played lower opposition sides in the cup recently. But we are still getting like ridiculously emphatic games. Uh, I mean, if this ends up 4-0... Not out of the realms of possibility for that to happen in real life. But it's the consistency with which I'm just smashing teams. Let's wait until we get like a Sunderland or an Ipswich in the league and play them before we make any rash decisions and, and put it up. Another difficulty, but I'm noticing that we are still smashing teams, even on Legendary. So uh, oh, this could be five. No, it's a, not a good timed run there really from Bogle. Or perhaps it wasn't a good time to do a step over from Doughty. But he has got five-star skill moves now, by the way, which you saw there. <laughs> it hasn't quite come off for him. Double substitution for Cholton now. And standing ovation, if you please, for that man there, Albie Morgan. As he is replaced by the youngster, Pearson, who moves out to the right wing. We also bring on Shinny, uh, who's going to come in and play centre midfield. And he replaces uh, Smith on the right wing. So, in fact... I just made it unnecessarily complicated because actually Shinny just directly replaces Morgan in Shinny. attacking midfield here and uh, Person replaces Smith directly. Levitt. Oh, it's offside. It's offside. Oh, Person's missed it anyway. Perhaps a chance here for Callum Harriet, the ex addict. He's down the left wing. He's definitely going to cut inside. Back to the left back Bramall. Into Pell, who's dispossessed by Ryan Innes again, just doing that defensive work so well. Callum Hall, though, into Norris, and that's a good finish from Norris. And uh, it was nice low into the bottom right-hand corner. And it was just enough to beat the keeper, Silvera. And they do pull one back, Colchester. And in a sort of weird way, I'm kind of glad that the CPU were able to do that against me. Because I do want a bit of a challenge. And uh, yeah, it was actually a really, really nice finish from, from the boy up front. And unfortunately, the clean sheet goes missing for this game. Brendan Weirdo caught our position here. Callum Harriet looking to punish Charlton for it. Back inside. Oh, Innes doesn't get the tackle in. It's a cross. And poof, Martin just does, a well to, just does well enough to put Brown off there. Well done. Innes to Martin. Into Ben Watson. Nice pass there. Dylan Levitt. Little through ball up to Person, who takes over. Back into Bogle. Can we get, finally, a good through ball? Not really. I mean, he is going to get onto the end of it. Person into the box. And the number 12, Shinny, just couldn't get the connection with it. And I think that is going to be it. George Lapsley. Is he a Colchester? Oh, no, that must be his, his brother. That's not George Lapsley. That's his brother. I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. No, I still can't remember his name. Anyway, that is the final score. 4-1 to Cholton there. And, uh, yeah, that's a good result. I mean, it was a, not an easy game. I mean, Colchester had two or three very good chances in that game. But Albie Morgan just pulling the strings there. More, uh, sorry, Bogle there. That guy on the screen right now with two goals. Finally having a good uh, performance for Charlton. And overall, reasonably emphatic in the end. And, yeah, the Charlton fans buzzing with that one. Wow. So I don't know if I would agree just purely based on some of the skewed passes that he made. 
But Omar Bogle has got a 10 out of 10 there. You can see Doughty on a 7, Shinny, Watson, Levitt, that midfield, all on high, well, 7s and 8s. The back line as well, Innes had a fantastic game again. Of course, that man Morgan had a 9. I would have given him a 10 and man of the match ahead of Bogle probably. But he had a fantastic game. He got one assist, one goal. Uh, Smith with an assist as well on a 7.8. Gunter, solid game. Wiradu came on, solid game. The keeper, Charlie Barker, solid games for them as well. Very positive all round and a great result with through. Ben Watson buzzing with a few appearances recently. He says, Gaffer, thanks for giving me a run of games. I'm feeling a lot happier now. That's very good. I'm proud of you. I mean, the way it goes with career mode, it's a shame because you do tend to like naturally neglect the older players. Dynamic potential changes that a little bit. Like we've seen that with Pierce. We've persevered with Pierce and he has actually played very, very well for us. But it is just still like when you get to 35, you don't tend to give as much <laughs> TLC to like players like Watson. So it's good that he's happy. He's had like a couple games in a row now. And of course, we have another cup game against Shrewsbury coming up in the EFL trophy. So it is the Papa John's trophy uh, that this fixture lies in. Guys, I genuinely think that we've missed one of our Danish scout reports. Oh, so guys, I actually had left the, uh, the, the Danish scout report read. So I, I missed it by accident. I'm sure a lot of you guys might have been screaming at me there. But uh, we've got two players that potentially might become good. Uh, not the best, but but potentially good. So uh, Jep Ostgard will sign him, and uh, Benjamin Nielsen will also sign him. One of those was a keeper. Uh, these two guys will reject, and we maybe have a little bit of Danish talent coming through now. And you know what? Considering we've got quite a bit of money, considering we're quite happy with the signings we've made, we don't need to make too many signings. I'm quite comfortable with spending some money on investing more in youth players so um i think we'll hire an additional scout to our entire setup um let's actually go wow that could be good couldn't it i don't think we will go with peterson even though he's danish that's just a little bit too much money for me at this stage so what we will do we'll go with the northern irish guy george kilpatrick and we'll actually send him to northern ireland as well um not for actual senior players, but for youth players. So let's go over to our youth staff. Oh, I've made it. I've made a terrible error. I've made a terrible, terrible error. I've actually just signed a senior senior scout, and I didn't realise that youth scouts were separate. All right, never mind. We'll, we'll hire the we'll hire an extra youth scout as well. Um, let's go with. Should we go with the Norwegian? Yes, I think we shall. He he provides good value for money. And what we'll do, we'll send all three of these guys to different countries. So let's see where we're going to pick. So in honour of players like Sean Bartlett, Mark Fish of the past, we'll go to South Africa and we'll go for three months and we'll look for, we'll look for an attacker. I think we'll look for an, a South African attacker over in Africa. So this is Henry Forrest. So he's a three-star, three-star scout, which means you're probably going to see some some pretty decent players coming out of South Africa. So he's going to go for three months. Look for a striker. Uh, Rutley, who, who brought us some pretty decent Chinese players before. Uh, we're going to set up a scouting network for him as well. Where shall we send you? Let's send him to Russia. Or should we go to Estonia? We could go to Estonia. I mean, th this is going to be a real... This is going to be like the best players that we get. Do you know what? Let's send him to Denmark. Let's send him to Denmark to get maybe just a few better Danish players. We'll go for three months and we'll go for go for wingers and see if we can get maybe like a Dennis Romadol replacement. Um, and then finally, we've got Johnson here, the Norwegian, who I think we're gonna send somewhere closer to home. Perhaps we'll send him to, yeah, let's go for Northern Ireland, shall we? Let's go for Northern Ireland and we'll go for, that's in honor of Josh McGuinness, Ben Reeves, various other players. Let's go for technically gifted Northern Irish players. And that is Danish, Northern, I Northern Irish and South African potential stars in the team in the future, hopefully. And I guess now we've signed a, 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 an actual senior scout as well, we can we can set up him to go and look in a, in a different country for some senior players. I mean, he's a very good scout. You can see there he's the best scout we've got. So let's send him to, let's send him to Germany to see if he can find any good talent for us over there. So guys, now we can get into this fixture against Shrewsbury in the EFL trophy. I'm pretty comfortable with Quicksim in this. I don't care about this trophy too much. Um, the financial rewards are not that great either. 
So hopefully we can get a win with our, our cup squad again. And we do get a 1-0 win. And it's uh, Shinny who comes off the bench for Smith, who gets the, the one goal to take us through to the next round of that trophy. So we're still in it. And yeah, good to see a lot of the uh, young players, the rotation players getting a lot of game time recently in the career mode series. And we're back to league games where we have a decent opponent, AFC Wimbledon, a London derby as well. Uh, they are eighth in the league. And yeah, way, way, way off Chol. And look at us up there with 57 points, ridiculous stuff. So we're gonna do the sim on this one, the actual sim. And I hope, I hope that these players haven't lost match sharpness, these uh, this first 11 really, because of course we have been playing a lot of games with our backup team, our reserve team, our youth players and that sort of thing. So here we go into the game against Wimbledon. Let's see what highlights it's got in store for us. So you can see on their lineup, they've got uh, Joe Piggott, the ex-Cholton player as Cholton are going to kick off this one. Are we going to have an early chance to take the lead? Let's see. Nike and Madison linking up well as always. Forster Kasky gets the ball out to Johnny. Gilby into Madison, into Nike, and that is the opening goal of the game very early on in this one. And it's Chucks and Nike, of course, with it, linking up with the, the usual suspect, Marcus Madison. Gilby, really good long pass there to our number 20. Who's that? Crowley, of course. Back to Naruse. Is he going to get the cross in? He turns back into Gilby. Linking up. He's going to pass it surely. Oh, he should have passed that to Anike. We had a really golden opportunity there. But still with the ball, Charlton here. Are we going to get that second goal? Oh, just taken down the wing again. Turned in the box, though. The win with a defender. Gilby. Oh, it's over the bar. We really should have finished that. 70% possession for Charlton. We'll just straight up resume the game. And hopefully we can keep this kind of pressure and dominance up. Let's have a look at the ratings. Oh, you can see a Nike there on a 9.3. Am I in the way? I'm not in the way of anything. That's really good. Uh, Nike in the box here. It's Madison back to Nike with his second of the game. And that man on the sim is on a 10 out of 10. And I'm not surprised. That's really good stuff from uh, Charlton in the sim. We'll wait until the 60th minute so we can make a couple of subs. And then we might jump to a result after that. So you can see we have brought on Chris Gunter at right back to replace Naruse. We've also brought on Doughty in the left wing position. Can they have an impact on the last 20 minutes of this game? Essentially one of the last chances of the game now for Cholton. And Anike to Gilby into Madison and he buries that. Looks That looked like a really cheeky finish. I could just imagine him like looking that way and dinking it past the keeper on the left. And that is, I think, one or two assists for Madison. And there's his goal as well. A 9.5 for him, a 10 for Anike. This is going swimmingly. There we go then, full time on the sim. We actually let it play out in the end. We didn't skip to result. And uh, yeah, it was worth it because we got to see Madison with that extra goal in the 85th minute. Very pleasing. And we are just still walking this league, boys and girls. We really are. So guys, we've got this game against Peterborough coming up in a few days. But I've just seen this risk of losing five players pop up. So a few players that we actually need to get down on longer term contracts one of them is amos one of them is madison so let's see if we can do something with them so let's talk about the players that we managed to tie down to longer term deals marcus madison signs for an extra year which is really good for us i mean i, I would have liked to get him for like three years but he he weren't having it so we got him down for an extra year at least so that's good we also got ben amos on an extra for an extra year uh, he's 30 and 68 rated, so I'm just thinking in the championship in our first season, he'll be a good like backup option, hopefully, if we can sign somebody or maybe see Silvera become the first team keeper. He might be a way off, might be a bit too soon for him, but we'll see what we do in the goalkeeper department. So up on Wiradu, we got an extra three years onto his contract, so he's now with us for three and a half more seasons. Uh, he's just a good, young, versatile player. Look at all the positions he can play. It's good. Do you know what? Sorry about that. I'm actually going to change myself to the left. Um, I know you guys probably missed out on Madison's face and stuff, but um, at least I remembered <laughs> eventually. And then we got one more player signed to a long-term deal, which was Ian Martin, who's now with us for pretty much six years, which is ridiculous considering we've had to take advantage of the, uh, the Chelsea glitch. And he's gone up to a 62 rated left back. So at 18, he is looking to be a real prospect for the future. So you guys just got out of our press conference and it is Peterborough who come to the Valley. Bit risky, potentially. Well, I say risky, it's not really that risky, but we are going to quick sim it. We're 15 points clear of Portsmouth in second. So that's five wins that they've got to make up on us in the remainder of the season. We're bang on halfway through the season as well. So this is going to be a very telling result um, if we can get the better of Peterborough here we really should be walking the league. Pierce has gone down annoyingly to a 67. There's a few rating changes as well that I think have taken place. Um, 
Oh, it's not actually as many as I thought. Smith's gone up. We already discussed that. Martin's gone up. We already discussed that. Top and wiradu has gone up. We don't know if we discussed that. Shinny, we did. Davison as well. And Morgan has gone up, it looks like, as well. So this is very, very, very good signs. So we've put Albie Morgan on the bench. That's all we're going to do. We'll go for the quick sim. Oh, I kind of hesitated there because I'm just a bit worried because they're third. And we do get the 2 0 win. Mate, what was I worried about? Anike and Gilby on the score sheet again. Uh, Smith and Watson got some game time there as well. But we got the win. Let's have a look just to end the episode then where we are in the league. I think it will be like 15 to 18 points clear of Portsmouth now. Um, certainly will be, yeah. I mean, we're way, 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 way clear. Uh, so what's that? 18 points clear. Yeah, it is 18 points clear of Portsmouth in second place. We're walking the league. Another four games down, guys. Let's, uh, let's progress all the way to this Doncaster game so we know what we're dealing with next time. Uh, a, a few fixtures in a short space of time here, so we might have to uh, rotate the squad a little bit for the league next time round, but looking forward to that very, very much. Let's have a look at the office notification as well, because it's just bothering me. And it is, it is Darren Prattley who is saying that he's a bit worried about his game time, but he's still overall quite happy. So I'm just going to say I've had to move things around a bit. Let's see what he says to that. He's reasonably happy with that. And yeah, that is going to be the end of today's video, guys. So remember, we've got a stream coming tomorrow. So I hope to see as many of you there as possible. And of course, you can also, if you become a member, choose the team that we are going to do for our next Clubs in Trouble episode. But until then, guys, until the next episode, until tomorrow's stream, uh, yeah, have a good one and I'll see you later.